Okay, so we back up in this gig. What's up? What's up? What's up? This is your boy Darren Green, and I'm back with another episode of TDGS Reviews. As you know, I am doing a review series on candy and the gang okay but before we get into it though please be sure to give this video a like uh give it a subscribe and also leave a comment if you can if you agree with me if you don't agree with me you want to argue please keep the interactions up um a couple of things i want to mention yeah there was not an episode 161 last week i am very sorry but my computer literally crashed the day like literally the day we were taping we were supposed to tape and the computer just stopped working and Derek, he had, a, he had to work. So, I mean, there was no way for us to do that show at that time. Very disappointed. It was a missed opportunity. There was a lot of crazy ish happening that day, but um, it's, it's whatever I'm over it. I'm working on getting a new computer, but it seems like after refreshing it back to factory settings that the computer is working. Okay. So. I'm here for now, you know, it's, it's so when I said that the episodes are on a tentative halt, it's been lifted. So you're going to get an episode this Friday. I'm going to use the computer less. I'm just going to use it to apply the jobs in the podcast. Like literally that's going to be it. So I feel like I'm talking too much in the intro. Let's get into this episode. So Candy and the Gay episode two. So my first initial thoughts of this, of the episode, I felt was a little better towards the end now the beginning i was a little it was a little it was a little dry in the beginning like and i understand that these characters have to get used to being on television this is probably their first time ever being on a reality te a television show and they feel like they may have to act up to you know, the cameras, you know, sometimes I, I get that as a, as a podcaster, as someone that goes live and stuff like that. Like, I feel like I need to act up for the camera or, oh, they're not going to get the, the, the moment that they need. So the ratings will be, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a whole lot of things. You just have to be yourself. Okay. Be yourself. And I, and I see that a lot of these characters and we're going to get into when we, when I talk about the timeline, a lot of these characters are not themselves or they exaggerate who they are. And with that being said, let's get into the timeline. So we first meet cousin Patrick. We know we knew Patrick a couple of seasons of house a couple of seasons ago with housewives. And like we seen like glimpses of him and stuff like that. A lot of people like, like him and think that he's like really, really cute. And it's just like, okay. Anyway, so we get, we get Patrick and we also get the cousin, which is head of the kitchen, Melvin. They are roommates currently in the, and they, they live like right next to the, to the spot, the, the area of the restaurant. Now, Patrick is the parking manager, and I'm glad that this show is letting me know about certain things, because <laughs> when I make my trip to Atlanta, uh, best believe I'm Ubering to OLG. I'm not paying for no parking. What? And y'all be in spots like, y'all be in them damn spots, like, because like, they said the same thing about Nini, uh, the Lanethia Lounge or whatever. It's in an area where there's other stores, like department stores and you're going to charge for the, for the damn parking lot. Child. I'm Ubering. Look, I'm Ubering from my hotel to OLG. When I get down, I'm not paying for no damn parking. Are you kidding me? So anyway, yeah, he's the, he's the parking manager and he, you know, he's very passionate about that job and he's very passionate about OLG and, and just the family, which is cool, which is, you know, which is, you know, he's, he's all right. You know, he's a little bit of a, we see a little bit of a backstory with him. He's dating this girl named Safari. Um, we later found out that, he once dated Shandreka or however, however the hell you say her name, child. But we got a lot to get into that. But also, we meet Melvin. We meet Melvin. He's he's basically a cook. And they say that, like, Todd is kind of hard on him because, you know, he needs to be doing what he needs to be doing as a, as a greeter. Or not a greeter, as a, a cook. And Candy is not too hard on him and stuff like that. And I think there's this disconnect with the company. I just, like, I feel like Candy, like, I know that these are your, these are, you know, she considers them as her children because they're so much younger than her and they look up to her and stuff like that. But like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look, if you're going to work here, you gotta get shit done. Okay. I'm not going to give you chance after chance after chance and you, and you're not doing what you need to be doing. So I definitely agree with Todd. Um, and I definitely see him that he's like, he's giving space, but, but Todd got to put his foot down and be like, this is my shit too. You know, I help, I help with this business. And, and stuff like that. So yeah, Todd has every right to feel a way about Melvin not performing up to par. Um, yeah. So do with that what you will. 
we see Brandon and Dominique go on a date. Okay. Now, this is where it kind of gets dry because I don't really have much to say about this sequence. All that I can say is, you know, they're dating and they went to some kind of fancy restaurant. I like, even though I'm finding the first part of this episode a little boring, I like how we are getting more of the characters, the employees, and not too much of candy because I want this to, and I'm like I said, I feel like I have to bring this up every episode. I'm not trying to say it needs to be more like, you know, Vanderpump Rules because, you know, we got more backstory with each character and stuff like that. I don't know how the first season of that went, and how we got to meet all these characters, but I do know we did not see Lisa a lot, and we need to not see Candy a lot. And we got this, we got that this episode, which I like, and I hope we see more of. Even though this little date thing with Brandon and Dominique is boring, I don't see their relationship lasting. I don't care about the relationship. I Dominique is okay. Brandon is a little dumb. Nothing really much to say about that. <laughs> anyway. So we cut to Shandrika going, Shandrika and Dominique going over Torrin's house. And, you know, we find out that, that Don Juan wants to bring him back and well is inviting him back to work at LLG, I guess. As Now, my thing is this with Torrin, like what exactly he's a party planner or does he work in hardware? Is he, is he building shit? Is he, is he like, cause he came up late later in the episode, he came up in there with some, with some tools and a hand. I'm like, so what, so what is what you really be doing? So you not you more than just a events planner or something like that, or, or decorations like you? What you building shit? Like I don't know what he does. Somebody please tell me in the comments what that man does. But anyway, <laughs> they have they have interaction at uh, I guess they was at Torrance house, and it was funny seeing them interact. Dominique brought a dog, which I'm like, girl, what? Why why you bring a dog to somebody else town? Uh, 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 no, I, I don't care if I once I get my own place, I'm have a cat and what but I'm not taking my cat. I'm not taking my cat to nobody's house and I'm definitely not letting nobody take they bring their pet up in mine. He it was just, like I said, like I said, it was it wasn't much to talk about. Basically, we found out that he's going to be coming back to OLG. That's the information that <clears throat> that's literally the only important information that I got from that sequence. Uh, I don't really care about them make him making finger food. You know, it seemed like the gir- the girls, the girls, if you know what I mean, child, the girls. Uh, we know how to make some cut, some, some, some sliced meats and cheeses and stuff. I'm like, child, do we all not? Well, I don't know how to do it. Um, but it seemed like, child, every time I go to, every time I go to somebody's house, this, you know, I'm like, that's, that's what you got on the menu every time. Like, dang, we can't change it. Anyway, let me stop generalizing. Um, yeah, like I said, there wasn't much going on in that sequence. It just was a little, it fell short to me. Now we get some more family drama, which is okay. Like I don't mind going back to Candy and her family every once in a while because you know, they do, they are the money makers when it comes to drama. You get what I'm saying? They are going to give it to us. Okay. They're going to give us some type of conflict that they have to resolve. So I have no issue with the family. Now we found out that there's a relative named Kim and she is Aunt Bertha's oldest daughter. Okay. And I already have a theory and I was saying it tomorrow because I was watching it with my mom. So I'm, you're going to get her, I'm going to tell you her reactions to certain stuff, stuff too. So we found out that she actually w- worked at the OLG, but something had happened and she got mad and left. And allegedly she was going around telling other coworkers to go with her to this new restaurant. Now, this is this so says Mama Joyce, and they said Mama Joyce and her got into it. Her and Aunt Nora got into it. They said that she said that, and she is claiming otherwise. I don't know. It's he said, she said. You know, I'm. I, I love me some Mama Joyce. I think she's really entertaining. But sometimes, you know, Mama Joyce can she can really stretch the truth. Sometimes I don't know. Um, cause that, that's just so out of pocket. I mean, one thing is one thing if you're like an employee or whatever. Like it is something I can expect. Centrica to do right, um, but but a relative working there like that's very insubordinate if that's true. Now they said that you know Candy, I, I, I don't remember the sequence. I think Candy either was talking to Melvin or something, but they were saying that they were going to get them all together to to rehash the situation and try to get over it. Um, like I said, it was this is this is good drama, and my whole theory is that. Kim is essentially, 
Aunt Bertha, Aunt Bertha's oldest daughter, and I think that she's kind of in the same or very close age range with Nora and Mama Joyce because these two, when we get to the argument that's you know down somewhere down the line, it's like sibling. It's like a sibling argument, but we'll we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, so Brian comes back. He has his first day. You know the egg roll dude, dude with the toupee. <laughs> He does his little serving, like he was going around telling people, uh, he was telling people to hold your mule. I'm like, child, not we talking to, not we talking to, to customers like that? Like what, what, what bitch, where you, where you served at? <laughs> that ain't make, that ain't make no sense. But look, everybody got their own style in, in, in cause it's, it's also a performance. Like when you're a waiter, you know, you're being entertaining because you want to get it. You want to get a good tip. Um, so, you know, he was he was doing his thing. He met up with Philip and the interaction was a little weird. Philip, what I'm learning now from Philip is he could be a little elitist. He could be a little black bourgeoisie, like you bitches are under me and I'm your boss and you need to act, treat me like such, this, that, and the third. I like that in the first episode because I felt like they needed that type of energy because everybody was doing what the hell they wanted to do, but people wasn't even doing nothing that was that like inefficient this episode. So I'm like, what are you acting like that for? Anyway, Shandrika invites everyone to go out and Philip kind of like, my thing is, ain't nobody asked you anyway, you inserted yourself into that conversation. Um, talking about some up going out. What do, what do y'all mean? I'm like, first of all, they was talking to amongst each other. You inserted your ass in the conversation. And then when Brian asked, you know, did you want to come? He was like, no, like, I don't want to hang out with you. Like, it's just, it's just, like I said, it's just very elitist and it's just very like, like I'm that girl, y'all, that's kind of unprofessional. At the end of the day, I've hung out with coworkers before. I mean, I never hung out with my managers or anything like that. Um, I've friend them on Facebook. I friend, I friends, one of my managers, um, when I was working at BJ's show, because, you know, we kind of connected well. We both was, you know, and, you know, I was also friends with his, because his boyfriend worked at so I'm not, I'm spilling the tea, but no. But no, it was all cool. You know what I'm saying? I never hung out with him or ever desired to hang out with him. But at the end of the day, you know, if you don't want to go, you don't want to go. I would I would have just kept it pushing. Like, first of all, why are you, t- you supposed to be managing? Okay. Everybody doing their thing. They, they, they going out. If that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. I just can't, I can't, I can't with Philip child. Anyway, speaking of Philip though, <laughs> we got to go back to him because we get a backstory. We get it. We, we found out that he's one of the girls, um, which is okay, which I suspected, you know, uh, everyone, I think everyone did suspect it. I think when he said, honey, I'm not arguing with you. You work hourly. Like that was a read. That was a read. Like what Nini said, that's a read. Um, he's definitely one of the girls. He is dating some Brazilian dude child that lives in a whole nother, uh, country child. Um, okay. A lot of people in Atlanta does that. A lot of people in Atlanta. Ooh, ooh, let me stop generalizing child. Cause I'm, t- <laughs> well, from what we see with a lot of shows that are in Atlanta, we see a lot of people, tr- you know, date outside of the country and stuff. It, Usually they're from Africa and stuff, but you know, he got himself a Brazilian man. Um, the Brazilian, like me and my mom was watching, he was like, My mom was like, Oh, the, he's kind of cute, like the Brazilian man or whatever. Um, he we found out that he lost his mother recently and that his boyfriend that he's talking to, um, kind of helped him out through you know him grieving his mother, which was we get a we okay, finally we're getting some type of human side of Philip because you know the first episode he was very militant. This episode he's very elitist. And we also get like a little piece of him. It makes me almost care about his plight. Like you know his mother always told him that he has leadership skills and stuff like that. So that's probably why he's acting the way that he acts. Um, hopefully we'll get like some type of intervention where it's like, okay, you can scale back a little bit. Like you don't have to do all that. We understand that you are the manager and we have to listen to you because we are working here, but you also have to give respect to a certain degree. You get what I'm saying? But that's besides the point. Um, we get that he plans to have his own restaurant. So we already know, like, you know, he's probably going to get a lot of followers from the show. He's, you know, cause he's really attractive. Really. Everybody like him child. Everybody likes him, child. 
Um, he'll probably get like a bunch of followers off this shit, and he'll probably come up with his own restaurant. You know, hopefully he'll have like an upscale restaurant, like uh, like Blaze, and you know he'll go he'll move on or whatever. But I don't know, child. He's he's still kind of. I don't like people that think they're better than other people. That's just my thing. That's just that's my personal opinion. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, we get into the employee employees going out to dinner, and already <laughs> Shandrika, she I feel like she has to run. She feels like she has to run every scene that she's in. Like she's over here dictating where people should sit. Like, oh no, Brandon sit next to sit next to Dominique because you know trying to get at trying to let people know that her and um. Dominique and, and Brandon today. And I'm just like, girl, you are doing too much. I like, but she's good for the, look. She's good for the show. She is definitely candy kept her for a reason. It ain't because of her hosting. Okay. It is definitely because of her personality. And she was bad mouthing the, the, the restaurant child. She was telling people that she getting paid $12 an hour. Now everybody acted surprised. So I, I'm guessing that she's the only one that gets paid $12 an hour. Like, I mean, I get the cooks gotta get paid more, and 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 but the bartender gotta get paid. Well, I mean, you're dealing with you're dealing with liquor. I don't know. That's crazy. But anyway, yeah, she get she's getting paid twelve dollars an hour. Now my thing is, you can't. And my mom told said this. She said, "Yo, dumbass came from New York. You graduated college and did all this stuff to move down to Atlanta, Georgia, to work for twelve dollars an hour, like." Honey, you got a degree. You can tell you can, you at the point like, and I feel like I'm not trying to sound elitist. Look, but when you get a degree, you can tell places like, "Hey, I got this," so I feel like I should be getting paid that. Like you, you, you're at a point where you negotiate how much you get paid. So anyway, she starts bad mouthing the restaurant, and a lot of the employees like Torin and Brian and all them they start chiming in, saying they little issues with it. Mind you, Patrick is there. And my thing is, why y'all talking about, why, why y'all doing this when he around? Like, you know, he about to run back because at the end of the day, that's my family. I don't care if they wrong or not. And he he definitely said that on the, on the confession. It was like, but I guess that was a part of the point. That's 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 part of the show. You know, you got to talk crap and then someone's got to run back and tell the, the main character and then they're going to have some kind of argument and back go back and forth or whatever the case is. Um, So we get the intervention with Candy's family. Okay. All right, child. So Kim, Mama Joyce, and Aunt Noor, they get into it. You know, Mama Joyce is cussing at Kim. Kim is cussing at Mama Joyce. And Aunt Bertha just sitting there just like, why y'all cursing? Why y'all cur-? like at some point now I'm looking at my Aunt Bertha. Like, you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be talking about y'all like that. You is not gonna be talking about y'all like that. I don't care if you my sister or not, child. Look. <laughs> and nor nor and uh nor actually nora wasn't talking nora was about to get up and fight okay she was about to put hands on kim and i ain't never seen nor do any like she she is very she you know she reminds me of a very holy you know christian which i believe she is but you know when you push her to the point things just happen um but i was just like oh my god i know her like that's that's such a that's such a mama joyce move <laughs> Like I was like, now nah, she getting up about to fight the child, not not the aunties about to fight the niece child. But like I said earlier, I feel like they're kind of they almost seem like they're the same age. Like it seemed like Bertha had them had Kim while they Nora and Joyce was probably teenagers or a little bit younger than that. Like it seems like because cause the way they was arguing it seemed like like siblings arguing and stuff like that. Like cause you ain't talking to your auntie like that. Like she cause Kim was cursing at them too. So I don't know. They definitely gotta they gotta figure that shit out. But I mean, if she really did do that, which I was waiting for Bravo or some type of receipts of cause she said, well, no, sh- no, Kim had the receipts of of Aunt uh Mama Joyce cursing her out. I mean, there's no proof of her saying that, hey, I'm leaving. Come with me to this place. There's no proof of, you know, it's hearsay. If Kim did say that, that's kind of messed up. That's kind of messed up. It's, 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 you don't like family or not. Well, no, yeah. Yeah, no, family or not. Like, you, that's just not a good business move. You get what I'm saying? It just, it just was weird. But anyway, like I said, Mama Joyce is known to be lying. She, she, you know, she's known to lie sometimes. She's known to lie. Uh, so we don't know. 
now Patrick tells Candy Sandra, what Sandrika said. Uh, Sandrika, whatever. I, I really don't know how to pronounce that girl name. Uh, somebody say that. And how do you pronounce that girl name? <laughs> okay, put it in the comments. Like, sound it out, because I, I, I'll be, I'll be fighting with this name every time I see it on my damn notes. Anyway, so it just gave us a little seed that Candy's gonna address Sandrika some at some point. Uh, probably next episode or the episodes in the future. We see Philip come over, talk to Don Juan. He does his thing, whatever. Like I said, this is where he brought the tools and stuff. I'm just like, are you like a interior decorator or I think that's what he said, right? He's an interior decorator because it seemed like he, I don't know, child, people, people in their careers in Atlanta, child, they, people be doing anything. Anyway, he goes into the area where Philip is and Philip is like, you know, what's going on? Like, could you state your business here? And could you talk to me in the set third? I'm just like, what's what's this? What, what what's happening here? Like, cause and I'm not trying to say I'm on Torian's side because I feel like Torian was definitely being a little bit provocative as well. Like, I'm just like, what are y'all doing? Like, I've seen some of my mutuals talk about how you know it was like a pissing contest that they were trying to you know do there. I'm just like, oh, that's how y'all girls get down, child. Y'all not y'all rough and purses, girl. Anyway, and this is where I have, and this is will conclude what I got to say about the show. I feel like they really got to get used to being on TV because it feels it, it feels very exaggerated, and it feels like people are trying a little bit too hard. This is the first time them being on television. I know hell if I was ever given the opportunity to be on TV, maybe maybe I have these same issues too. But you know, y'all got to work on this dynamic. Because it seems like the conversations are seem to be forced. That's what it comes off as forced. You know, reality TV doesn't seem like that. Even though we know that it's fake, like let's let's break the fourth wall. We know that the shit is fake, but people are people make it real looking. Like Real Housewives of Atlanta, half of stuff. I'm not gonna say it's scripted, um, but it is guided, and you can do with that what you will. Um, but it looks real. Like it, it feels real. They act real. It's like an action. Like it feels a little bit real. I think that's the problem with a lot of these characters. They, they, they seem like they're trying too hard because they want to. And I get it. You want this. Is the first season. You're, you're trying anything that can get y'all a second season. Because second season is the check. Um, and y'all want to see it prosper. But you know, I just want them to just calm down, child, and have these natural conversations. And other than that, I like the show. I, I, I can't wait to talk about the next episode. And until next time, I'm your host, Aaron Green, and this is TDGS Reviews, signing off.